With Kobe Mano and Alejandro Garnacho starting to establish themselves as basically some of the first names on the Man United team sheet this season, we're going to take a look at four other academy stars that have ceilings just as high as Mano and Garnacho could even be better. Who are the best four talents that could potentially come through after these youngsters? So please do hit that like button if you have not already. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new and share the video. This is Alice here on the United Breakdown, where we look at Manchester United from more of a footballing tactical perspective. And then over on Alice Talks Football, we cover all the news. Now, we're going to start with Ama Ibrahimov. And I don't really talk about players this young normally. 15 is very young. I think when they get into the 16, 17 age mark, that's when you talk about them, 16, 17, 18. But Ama Ibrahimov is a guy that is just levels ahead of his age. Now, obviously, you've got to remember sometimes at 15, some boys haven't fully like matured yet and maybe they'll catch up with Ammo and this all of those factors. But he captained the under uh, 14s and 15 sides. At age 14, he made his debut for the under 16 side and then the under 18 side against Liverpool on the same day and scored in both of those games. Under 16's debut, then had a break, came on against the under 18s and scored against Liverpool in those days, which just speaks so highly of how Ammo is rated. He mostly plays as a left winger that cuts inside and drives the ball up centrally. He can play as an attacking midfielder, can play as a right winger, and he's very, very good at sort of driving and running at people he's very very highly rated he's actually from Dagestan so he can represent Russia but because of issues in Russia they're out of all tournaments so he's actually representing England at youth level and he's from a footballing family his younger brother is in the Man City Academy Mohammed and then his youngest brother again is in the Manchester United Academy he moved to England a couple of years ago was, did really good job at Sheffield United and that's how he got picked out by Man United. And if you can look at Amir Ibrahimov's, pro Ibrahimov's profile here, you can see that he's a left winger, but he does often sometimes cut inside and go into those central areas and obviously take corners as well. Um, one thing that's sort of been noted about him in general is that he's physically and mentally above others his age. Very strong-minded, very mature, but also physically very good. Knows how to sort of beat his players. He's very much an inside forward. He plays left wing and loves to cut in. No traditional direct players. And I think Manchester United with Anthony taking... 50 touches. Man United sort of lacked those direct wingers, although on the left-hand side they seem to be a lot better in Garnaccio and Rashford. He's one of those direct wingers that likes to make things happen, that likes to take on his man, that likes to score, which is what you want in your wingers. Very good one-on-one, -on -one, very good at creating space for himself, and he's very quick with his feet, very skillful, but he's quick with his feet in a sense he can change his pace rapidly, which makes it hard for defenders to get the ball. If you watch clips of Amit Ibrahimov play, you'll just see him drive the ball through like three different defenders using his speed, his feet, his pace, running through players and I think he's best known for his ability to just take the ball dribble it up the pitch get past multiple defenders very explosive very good at progressing the ball but also sort of very good at actually breaking lines as well his dribbling is so good that he'll just break through defensive line break through blocks and get the ball up the pitch and because he's got that low center of gravity technique and a good technical ability when dribbling he's when you watch him it's very aesthetically pleasing and again he's only 15 the sky is the limit for him but he is a top player. He is more developed than ever his age. So those might, some of his t uh, class will maybe catch up with him. You've got to see how he does against players that are more physical than him as well, because he's quite physically good for his age, but people will catch up with him. And I think maybe he was more reliant on his strong foot, but they're just all areas that could be developed. But recently, two days ago, we played against Newcastle's under 16 and got all four goals in a 4-1 win. Scored a banging free kick versus Liverpool the other day. Very good, very good season, one to watch. Don't think he'll be involved anywhere with United the next year because he's 15. Um, can't see him going on pre-season or anything, but I think maybe in a year's time, he'll be one that will sort of be spoken about a bit more when he's 16. Uh, but I think he's one that, you know, there's still a good two years before I think his name will really, really be mentioned. Now, let's talk about a 16-year-old that actually next season could be their breakthrough season. And that is Shea Lacey. Now, Shea Lacey is sort of a right winger and attacking midfielder. He has also played all across the front three, but he's definitely the right mid attacking midfielder. Position. Shea will be 17 in April. He's currently out with an injury. He was having a brilliant start to the season, but got injured. Um, and I think he's returned from injury in about end of February. And he's one that may be turning 17 at the end of the season. Man United pre-season would like to get on that that tour as well. Obviously, very highly rated by England as well. 
Um, he's got some of the best technical ability. He's basically been compared to Phil Foden, but if you looked at Phil Foden his Man City Academy days, how how he moved the ball, how his IQ and reading of the game was so good. Shea Lacey is one of those where he's been compared to Messi. He's been compared to Phil Foden because of his technical ability, his ability to make the ball glide, stick to his feet, just how good he is at moving the ball, how he uses his body, his creativity, his IQ. And England rate him really, really highly. He's all, it was always been for England before his injury as well. Um, and it's just one of those players that's spoken about a lot that I expect will sort of be um, getting towards Man United next year, maybe in a year's time, one where you speak about. Um, but he's sort of described as Man United's Phil Foden by many with elite technical ability and composure on the ball. The ball glides at his feet using his close control when he's very good at finding spaces and controlling the ball and getting out tight scenarios. Looks best when he cuts into the right half space, delivering lethal shots and threading killer passes. Only 16 and currently recovering from a bad injury, but... Could be one to make the preseason tour next season if he stays on track, rated highly by England and Man United have compared him to Foden. Even Messi, due to his technical ability, is what I said when I did a short analysis on the player. So what are his strengths? Why is he so hyped up? Well, he's hyped up by England and Man United. England set, see him and there was a report that said England almost see him as the best 15-year-old around when he was 15 because that report was done a couple of months ago. He's lighting up the under 18 and 19 at age 15. He was completely lighting up and he just had everything you want in a technical player. Man United lacked that technical ability. He had the close control, the technique, the dribbling, the flair, the agility, the balance, but he could create chances. He was a good passer, one-twos, long pass, short pass, the crossing ability, but also had the pace and creativity, all of those major strengths you need. His biggest strength was probably his dribbling, the low centre of gravity technique to just glide plus players and shift the ball and change uh, speed quickly. And academy-wise, he's been very much compared to Phil Foden, probably one of the highest rated players here. And I think why he's so rated is despite being very small and having a small frame, he uses his body well to get out of tight angles. He's very press resistant. He can protect the ball. He can carry the ball. He's got great decision making skills, but he's a great playmaker. He has that perfect weight of pass. So he can just loft the ball and it's just perfect. He gets that proper weight of pass and that technique that is levels above his age. He links up well with his teammates. His reading of the game, his control, his technique, his ability, everything is so advanced. Now, talking about someone that might leave Manchester United, the oldest player on this list, and someone that I'd like to see incorporated a bit this season, or at least go out on loan, is Isaac Hansen. And Norway consider him the next big star, and they've got like Noosa and Bob and a lot of players. But Isaac Hansen's always been the most rated. He's recently been compared to David Silva when he was sort of playing alongside Kevin De Bruyne. He's wanted by top teams because he might be leaving United, Italy, Germany, Spanish top clubs looking at him. And I think, you know, with Pelistri leaving and looking at, and, and you've got Dutch and American teams looking at Pelistri, and then Hansen might be leaving and you've got all these elite teams like Napoli, Atletico looking at Hansen. It speaks of how highly Hansen is rated uh, among other players. I'd say he's mostly a box-to-box -box that likes to drive forward, but could play as a DM, could play as an attacking midfielder. I think he's definitely a number eight in my opinion, and he thrived in the under-21 squad with the likes of Dan Gore, Mejbri and Fernandez, and he's definitely one of the most advanced in his areas. Um, my analysis on him was this. He excels in various midfield positions, showcasing versatility with strong passing and dribbling and defensive skills. While previously playing as a number six, he currently operates more as a 10. Uh, success in these roles requires understanding positional play, adaptability and teamwork, and Isaac Hansen's exceptional technique, delicate touch and precise ball control highlights his mastery, demonstrating hours of practice and talent that enable him to manoeuvre great gracefully and even in tight situations is how I described him when I wrote about him and sort of looking at his strengths I think it's a smart thinking his ability to just execute the ball so well control the games organize attacks but if you look at Isaac Hansen highlights you'll just see him just produce this brilliant pass here this brilliant pass there his link up between attack and defense his overall play his IQ his ability to make things happen is brilliant now we're going to go into someone for the last player that Manchester United have recently signed in Jack Fletcher. He plays for the under-18s. He's trained with the first 11. He's a centre mid that can play DM. He's six foot. He's an all-rounder, technically and IQ-wise. He's very, very above his age. He has got a twin brother that's also in the academy, but Jack Fletcher has been the better out of the two Fletcher twins. The son of Darren Fletcher. He was at the Manchester City Academy before. He has been very good. I read it somewhere that actually he's viewed as having a higher ceiling than Isaac Hansen, which is pretty insane considering how high Isaac Hansen's ceiling is. Um, but that was just like one report out of, out of many reports as well. But what makes Jack stand out for me when watching him, and I've only watched a little bit of him because he's recently joined, is his vision and passing. He's, it goes in those deeper midfield areas and can produce switches of play, through balls. He has that passing range and composure that allows him to dictate from deep. But also having that ball control and dribbling skills so when the ball's at his feet, it's very comfortable on the ball, getting out the tight spaces, getting out the press, getting past players and then laying off a lovely touch. He's got that brilliant first touch 
and passing accuracy to keep the ball. I think the calmness, composure and maturity is beyond his age. And I think that's why we like Corby Mayno, that sort of calmness, that technical ability. But what I really like about Jack Fletcher, I think is his IQ, his decision making under pressure. He always knows to ha what to do, whether to keep the ball, what pass to make, always knows when to make the right pass. And I think what makes him stand out is more his understanding of the game. You can see his tactical and awareness is so great. He's very good at reading the game and getting between the players to stop those line breaking passes, intercepts the ball a lot. Kind of reminds me of Declan Rice in that sense even though he's more box to box, but he's also got those leadership qualities. He's got probably one of the best work ethics I've seen. I think he covers loads of ground off the ball, which is something we've been complaining about Man United, inability to cover ground off the ball. He can cover a lot of ground. He presses well. He's got that work ethic while that IQ and reading of the game, while the ability in possession to pick out players. And he looks like a very good player. So there are my four players that I've picked out to be the next best talents after Garnacho and Mayno. I would keep an eye on Dangor, Armas, uh, Fernandez, who's actually leaving above Fernandez, but might not might just be alone. JC Fitzgerald, Willie Cambala, and of course Toby. Those all of those players are ones to keep an eye on as well. But I think the four that I've mentioned stand out. Please do hit that like button. Of course, subscribe down below for new. Thank you for watching. Bye.